Today, let's catch up on the storyline of Citizen Z at the Northern Lights base. During an attempt to contact Roberta, he discovered his server had been hacked. It was only after Citizen Z penetrated layers upon layers of encrypted files that he uncovered the truth. The dangers Roberta and her team faced along their journey were no coincidences. Someone had been exploiting his system to track Murphy. This made Citizen Z very angry, and he was sad to leave the base where he had been living for several years. Citizen Z was frozen in the snow and ice because of the blizzard, but a woman named Caius saved him. As they sat down to eat together, Citizen Z noticed that the family wasn't touching their food. Something felt off. Upon checking the food storage, he saw that their supplies were nearly depleted. Yet, they were willing to share what little they had with him. Moved by their generosity, Citizen Z decided to take them back to the base, where there was enough food to last for decades. After a long and arduous journey, they finally reached their destination. With the help of Uncle Kasky, they managed to restore the power and communication equipment at the base. Citizen Z and Kaya became a couple. Later, Citizen Z began teaching Kaya about communication and computer technology, and she quickly mastered it all. To relay intelligence, Citizen Z had Uncle Kasky take him to find Roberta, while Kaya stayed behind at the base. After delivering the information to Roberta, he told Kaya to wait for him at the Northern Lights base. Kaya then shared some good news. She was pregnant, which overjoyed Citizen Z. But on his way back, Citizen Z suddenly lost contact, leaving Kaya to call out for him on the radio every day. Two years flew by, yet Kaya still hadn't seen Citizen Z return. While Kaya was outside fixing a power switch, she spotted someone approaching, thinking it was Citizen Z. She took a closer look with a sniper scope only to realize it wasn't just one person. Such a military force can only belong to Zona. Sure enough, the soldiers began to attack, and Kaya quickly took her child back to the base. She handed the child to her grandmother and swiftly packed their things. Then they headed to a secret room Citizen Z had told her about, stocked with supplies, foreseeing this day might come. Kaya then started to send out a distress signal using the microphone, which was picked up by Roberta and her group. However, due to poor signal, they couldn't contact Kaya, so they set out to find the signal tower. Meanwhile, Kaya was monitoring the Zona soldiers, wondering what they were searching for. Then, Mr. Sunshine from Zona greeted her through the camera, indicating he knew Kaya had been watching them. Feeling helpless, Kaya continued to call for help over the radio to no avail. As she checked the monitors again, she saw someone at the secret door's entrance. In shock, she watched as the man opened the door and entered, to protect her child and grandmother. Kaya approached the entrance, gun in hand, the man was descending the stairs. Kaya found the right moment to knock him to the ground with the butt of her gun and began to ask what they were doing here, but the man didn't respond, so Kaya took the gun and turned him over. I want to see my boy. Simon? It was their first meeting in two years, and the time had aged Citizen Z significantly. Then, Kaya introduced Citizen Z to their daughter, Jay-Z who embraced her father. After a brief rest, Citizen Z shared his experiences over the past two years. In summary, he had tried to seek help, but trust had eroded among people in the apocalypse, forcing him to walk back. Hearing this, Kaya was deeply moved. They exchanged a few words and then teamed up to confront the Zona soldiers. Citizen Z revealed that the base stored military secrets from the old era, which was likely why they came. The only way to stop them was to destroy all the secrets in the data room. They cautiously made their way there, encountering Zona soldiers fighting a mutated zombie that couldn't be killed with ordinary guns. Frightened, they fled immediately. As they tried to escape downstairs, they were blocked by the mutated zombie. With no other option, they turned to run. Unfortunately, they were cornered by the zombie, with Citizen Z desperately resisting. He couldn't die now, having just reunited with his family. So, Citizen Z mustered unprecedented strength and pushed the mutated zombie down the stairs. Then they started to divide up the work. Citizen Z went to capture Sunshine, while Kaya went to cut off the servers and delete the secrets. But as Kaya worked in the secret room, she saw Sunshine had reached the main control room. She left her task, armed herself, and headed to confront Sunshine. But at that moment, she suddenly heard Citizen Z's screams. So Kaya had to give up and went to support Citizen Z. Citizen Z was struggling with two zombies, but Kaya arrived just in time to save him. They then furiously attacked the down zombies. After 
They heard a loud roar and ran outside to see Zona's helicopter leaving, indicating they had obtained what they wanted. This was a TV station eight years before the zombies virus outbreak, where Carly and Jack were reporting on a plane crash. As the camera connected to the reporter on the scene, they were desperately running away, followed by a zombie knocking the reporter to the ground. At that time, people didn't know what zombies were, so they were unprepared for them. Carly and Jack had never seen such an emergency situation, so they quickly cut to commercials. Then, Carly went to the bathroom, and suddenly there was a loud noise from the room next door. Sometimes Taco Tuesday fights back. <laughs> Helen? Carly heard strange growling sounds that were quite spine-chilling, so she quickly ran out. After the commercial break, Carly and Jack resumed the news broadcast. At this moment, the reporter who was bitten by a zombie was brought back to the company. He told his colleagues that there seemed to be a big chaos outside, with some rioters attacking people around them wildly. Bruce thought it was a big story and quickly got everyone to work. Then, Carly and Jack began reporting on this event and turned the camera to the infected reporter. But facing the camera, he didn't say a word, looking dazed as if he was about to fall asleep. Jack immediately reminded him, but the reporter still did not respond. Just then, the infected reporter spat out a mouthful of thick phlegm at the director, which grossed everyone out at the scene. Even the experienced Jack was stunned. Then the staff went up to check the situation, but in the next second, Lord Mike! Talk to me, buddy! Everyone saw it and rushed to stop the reporter, but the zombie's virus had already spread. Seeing this, Jack immediately stood up to help. But Carly, as the mainstay of the station, continued to report the news, ignoring what was happening around her. As the zombie's virus infection got more severe, Carly's assistant immediately pulled her and ran. They didn't forget to take the camera to report the news while running. By the time Jack thought of escaping, it was too late. He was attacked by two zombies from both sides and was crazily devoured by zombies in front of the live camera. By then, Carly and the assistant had escaped the studio, but there were still many zombies outside. They had no choice but to hide in the bathroom. Then Carly quickly moved a trash can to block the door. They were still dumbfounded and hadn't recovered from the shock. Suddenly, Carly thought of a plan to squirt hand sanitizer on the floor to slip the zombies. After saying this, she went to ask the assistant to bring more paper towels. But as soon as the assistant opened the door, a zombie rushed out and bit the assistant on the neck. After dealing with the assistant, the zombie turned its attention to Carly. Under Carly's fearful gaze, the zombie slowly approached her. Who knew? In the next second, the zombie just stepped on the hand sanitizer, hit its head on the sink, and died on the spot. But just as one wave subsided, another arose the assistant slowly turned into a zombie. Seeing this, Carly grabbed her backpack, threw it at the zombie, and quickly fled the bathroom. But there were more zombies outside, all eyeing her hungrily. Carly had no choice but to run to the rooftop. Groups of zombies were chasing her, but luckily she was fast and managed to get to the rooftop at the last moment, successfully blocking the crazed zombies. Upon reaching the rooftop, Carly immediately used the walkie-talkie to call for help. Knowing that a helicopter would arrive in five minutes, Carly finally breathed a sigh of relief. Encountering a zombie virus outbreak, don't panic, record a news segment first. It must be said that Carly is really dedicated. Then Carly waited for the helicopter rescue. You thought she was rescued just like that? More on that later. The scene returns to the present, where Roberta and her group arrived at the TV station. They also quickly found the entrance. However, the hallway was filled with debris, making it very troublesome to clear. So, the group had to look for another way out. Then Roberta found the rooftop signal receiver, indicating that the communication equipment inside was intact. After circling around, the group found an emergency passage and successfully entered the TV station. Upon reaching the studio, 10K found a generator that seemed to be operational. Then, 10K turned on the switch, and the entire studio instantly regained power. But the sight of the corpses on the ground was chilling. The group then began to curiously inspect the studio, with all the equipment remaining untouched for eight years. Seeing this, Murphy sat in front of the live camera. Uh, work the teleprompter. How's that? <clears throat> I'm Jack Kingman. We interrupt this program for an Action 9 News special report. Who would have thought Murphy had this potential? Just then, the sound of zombies was heard from the side, rushing towards Doc. Seeing that Doc was about to be overwhelmed, Murphy slowly closed his eyes. 
It seems Murphy's abilities are slowly recovering. Then, under the pursuit of zombies, the group also came to the rooftop. Doc and the others desperately resisted the zombies' attack, while Lily and Roberta went to the signal receiver to connect the communication equipment. Suddenly, Murphy saw a zombie walking towards them. Roberta, seeing this, decisively pulled out her gun and ended its life. The zombie is none other than news presenter Carly. Carly was the only zombie on the entire rooftop, indicating she died in loneliness and agony. Then Doc discovered the crashed helicopter downstairs. It seems that the people who came to rescue Carly had an accident for some reason, showing how desperate Carly was at that time. After contacting Kaya, Roberta told her about the events of the past two years. Then Kaya also told Roberta about Zona stealing secret files. Although all the data was lost, the catalog still showed the name Black Rainbow. Roberta was shocked after hearing this. It was the same thing that appeared in her hallucination. <laughs> Having confirmed the reality of Black Rainbow, the group started heading eastward. This time, Roberta's team arrived at Mono Lake on the eastern side of the United States. The box dust came into contact with the thousands of corpses at the bottom of the lake, causing a chemical reaction that formed bubble clusters, creating significant difficulties for visibility and movement. Therefore, Roberta's team got separated upon arrival. They were searching for a way out while looking for traces of their teammates. To make matters worse, zombies would occasionally emerge from the bubbles for sneak attacks. At this moment, Doc and Murphy were frantically dealing with the zombies' attacks. Just then, Murphy noticed a lit-up barber shop ahead. Without much thought, they charged straight in. The bubbles were almost suffocating them. It was then that Murphy spotted two old acquaintances, the sketchy brothers, who always appeared suddenly, but today was different from before. Upon seeing Doc and Murphy, the sketchy brothers did not boast about their recent deeds but said some incomprehensible things. It seemed like they were hiding something. But Doc and Murphy did not suspect anything and directly placed all their weapons into the storage box at the entrance. Following that, Murphy jumped onto a chair to enjoy the service. During this time, Doc felt that the barber looked familiar but couldn't recall his name. Then, the barber began sharpening the razor blade. Seeing this, Sketchy immediately felt fear, and Skeezy was too scared to watch. It appeared there was a significant problem with this barber shop. As the camera panned up, a man was seen hiding in a corner with an automatic rifle in hand. Then, the camera moved down to reveal zombies standing inside the floor, all of them raising their heads as if waiting for food. Soon, Murphy was done with his haircut, just as the barber was about to pull the chair lever to adjust the seat. Murphy! What? Hey, uh, you wanna check out the tanning bed? They have a tanning bed? You have a tanning bed? Solar powered. Oh, you really have carved out a tiny niche of heaven here. It seems that they saved Murphy's life. Afterward, Murphy suggested Doc get fixed up while he went to enjoy some sunbathing. At this moment, the man upstairs made eye contact with Sketchy, as if sharing a dark secret. Then, Murphy, changed into new clothes, came out of the dressing room. Whoa! <laughs> Looking good. You're not getting in my pants. You're not wearing any. Sketchy then took Murphy to a room and asked him to fill out a health condition survey form. But Murphy, Impatient, pushed Sketchy out immediately. It turns out, Sketchy wrote on the form to get out quickly, but Murphy did not see it. Then, Murphy put on sunglasses, took off his shirt, and turned on the machine. <laughs> Sorry. At this time, Doc was getting ready to enjoy the service. He and the barber talked about a freak named Tiny, whose hair reached his knees. After hearing this, the barber's face changed dramatically. Then he calmly said he had never heard of it. As Doc talked about the freak Tiny, the barber turned and picked up the razor blade. Holy Moses! I knew it! Tony Cuball, you son of a bitch! <laughs> Luckily, Sketchy and the others timely blocked Tiny's attack. By then, zombies had already grabbed Doc by the hair. Just at the critical moment, the three, in the midst of fighting, bumped into the lever allowing Doc to escape from the zombie's grasp. But just as they were about to subdue Tiny, gunshots sounded upstairs, startling everyone into a frenzy. Thus, under the pressure of heavy firepower, everyone surrendered. We tried, tried to warn you. Well, next time, try harder. After being subdued, Murphy also recognized Tiny's identity. Doc also talked about his history with Tiny, 
During the black summer six years ago, Doc had already been robbed by Tiny and Sal, left without even his underwear. What's different now is that they no longer actively hunt for prey but wait for the prey to come to them, turning robbery into a storefront business. Just then, there was a knock on the door, followed by 10K and Lily opening it and walking in. Don't shoot! We're unarmed! Ran out of ammo. <coughs> oh, that's all that damn phobe. Oh. 